Welcome everybody to The Doctor's Office, a podcast with your host ALM. You will be hearing a lot of discussion and very interesting conversations, but you'll never guess who my first guest actually is for today. James Icon. Hello. <laughs> So, ALM didn't tell you that I'm going to be taking over the podcast, too, so... <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm joking, but... Well, he did mention that we're both doing the podcast thing, so... Yeah, it's, it's, it's going to be... Like, ALM and James Icon, this is kind of weird. <laughs> you see, outside outside of the whole... Outside the ring, we're, we're really good friends, so... I mean, we don't want to ruin that whole... The whole story for you guys, but... <laughs> <laughs> This is a podcast, for goodness sake, people. Don't take it too seriously. But, <laughs> anyways, um, we're just going to start talking about a lot of stuff that's been going on. You know, the usual. But, um, since this is our... F- I don't know if this is- we're going to continue this series, which is going to be called The Doctor's Office. You know, if you know my... I guess we'll just see how it image. goes, sort of thing. Like- yeah. I mean, I if know. you guys get yeah. <laughs> interested by, you know, the stuff we talk about, if you want us to talk about something you want to know about, just comment down below, and, you know, we'll probably continue this series, you know, episode two. Feel episode free. Uh, feel free to ask questions, too. Like, we're open to that. Yeah, we'll, we'll <laughs> feature your questions here in the podcast, and, you know, uh, let's get things rolling. Well, Alrighty. <laughs> Let's talk about ESW because, you know, we're in ESW, obviously. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's our main, like, thing right now, ESW. So, we got 200 degrees coming up, and, you know, pay-per-views take a lot of work. Yeah, they do, um, especially my wrestling skills, but, you know, <laughs> aside from that... <laughs> I mean, like... Because the, nobody else cares about the rest of the pay-per-view. They just want to see this match. <laughs> like... <laughs> Steal the show. <laughs> Practically. But... <laughs> but... I mean, like, the recording, the editing, and all of that stuff. I mean, like... What, how, what is your experience right now in ESW? Like, how, how do you feel being in ESW so far? <laughs> Have you seen the episodes? <laughs> <laughs> Obviously I mean, I, you have, but I mean <laughs> He loves ESW, he wants to take over <laughs> Well, the things that have been going on is just remarkable uh, It's outstanding, I mean <laughs> The way we, you guys have like Adapted and you guys have kind of like Just moved up on the pedestal sort of thing, right? And <laughs> it's just really crazy And I mean, I never yeah, thought like, that <laughs> Twisted Society would look so damn good. I mean, <laughs> honestly, <laughs> never thought we'd make them look strong. <laughs> but we're not—we're I mean, not a bunch of jobbers running around with masks. I mean, <laughs> um, well, we're not the anarchists running around with their red and blue. I mean, red and black. <laughs> That's my mistake. Red and black. I uh, mean, the red we're, we're more dangerous. Than the anarchist. Yup. <laughs> you guys shown that by a long shot. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean like. I mean like so far. Like when I made episode 1 of ESW. I mean. I thought this is just going to be like a typical. Like you know just. Just do it type of thing. Like. <laughs> I didn't I didn't know we That's would go we need, this uh... far. <laughs> Like, I mean, I I really didn't think we would try to go this far. I mean, we're almost at a thousand subscribers. That's really not that much yet. But, I mean. But it is quite a bit. I mean, for yeah. the way you guys started. You know, the, the really four, four digits. <laughs> but, I mean, we've been trying harder and harder each, you know, video that comes out. We've been trying to get more and more creative. And... I mean, pretty soon we'll be hitting PS4. That's that's gonna be our big like rise right there because we got a lot of plans for that. So, I mean, I actually didn't think me and you would be working together because <laughs> you know <laughs> our past. 
I mean, yeah, I mean, it's not so good, but I mean, who knows what happens? Anything is possible in ESW, so yeah, never say never either. <laughs> now, we could talk about how long All or Nothing took just for the two of us to make our match. <laughs> um, like, oh my god, <laughs> <laughs> it just took so long, guys. I mean, like. <laughs> Like, oh my god. Despite the audio messing up in the match. Yeah. I mean. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we since we got the, the hang of things, when it comes to commentary, I mean, 200 Degrees is going to be something you don't want to miss because we're going to go outside the box on that pay-per-view. Yeah, and I mean, and, we got Jesse Smoke, too. He's a, he's a new commentator, and he's been doing quite well, so. Yep. And uh, you mean, got Lewis. I know people. Who that is. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I know people don't really like Jesse Smoke that much, but whatever. I mean, we have, we think he's a nice guy. <laughs> yeah. I mean, he. I'm not mentioning any names here, but you know. <laughs> <laughs> he he's got an interesting match coming up at 200 degrees that I wouldn't want to miss because you know. Honestly, who would want to miss? Who would want to miss? Uh. 200 degrees in general like yeah. think about it <laughs> i mean like if you look at all the matches like it, it's like if you look at other um companies it's like uh, i think when this match comes on i'm gonna just gonna do a number one but this this pay-per-view you're gonna be like oh, i need to pause this and then when i come back i'm gonna watch this match because these matches i can't miss any of them it's gonna be that <laughs> type of thing so <laughs> there's also a lot of people who just skip to one match and then watch it and then <laughs> yeah every single moment in this pay-per-view you, you you just can't miss because i mean all the work that's been put into it i mean you you wouldn't want to miss anything because you you might skip through something that you shouldn't have skipped and you're probably not gonna go not gonna know what's going on but indeed <laughs> 200 degrees well now that 200 degrees is like you know We've been slowing down on content, but pretty soon when we hit PS4, we're going to be uploading so much faster. But uh, I starting school s soon, so I mean, oh my gosh, 200 degrees is probably going to take some time and I mean, you know, to get done. There's but, nothing wrong with taking time. It's Yeah. I mean, if we take our time on it, the, the better it's going to be, yeah. so... I mean, we're, we're not going to rush this pay-per-view. We're going to make sure it's very, very, you know... All or nothing was good. planned out, but I feel that it was just a little bit rushed, and, like, yeah. you know, we could have done a lot better. Yeah. And I mean, that's like, what we're aiming to do with 200 degrees, so... I mean, like, all or nothing being our first pay-per-view, you know, we, you know, we yeah. were beginners at a pay-per-view. Now we know what to expect when it comes to pay-per-views, and now we know what we are going to do with that pay-per-view. Before, like, before they knew me, I mean, before, oh my gosh, before All or Nothing, <laughs> they probably didn't even know who I was. They didn't even know of our background, so <laughs> I guess they kind of want to know what that whole thing is about. Yeah, well, I mean, like... Some people liked the pay-per-view, some people didn't, but, you know, in this world, you're not going to please everybody, so that's one thing, but... There's I mean, always going to be pros and cons to everything, yeah. so it's it doesn't matter, really. Like, John, John Cena is not going to have every single person in this world like him, because I know there's a lot of people that hate him, too, so... <laughs> but, I mean... All or nothing wasn't perfect, but, you know, it was still something. And 200 degrees, I can guarantee, is something that's going to be way better. And there's going to be a lot more shockers that happen, I promise you. Yeah, like... I mean, if you think all or nothing was a big shocker, you got to watch 200 degrees. Yeah, I mean, 200 degrees is going to be something way, like, a whole different dynamic. Like, I mean, it's supposed to be our summer show, but, you know, you know... Uh, like if you're working on a pay-per-view you don't really know when it's gonna come out so you know like Famniversary 3 was supposed to come out like Wrestlemania time but it actually came out in the summer uh, yeah mm -hmm. but you never know when it's gonna be, get done so the key is to take time so I mean yeah <laughs> pretty soon eventually uh, it'll be out before you even know it so I mean 
yeah, we're gonna be taking our time on this one. May take a while, but I mean, we could just say that a lot of good things come to those who wait. So yeah, and uh, a lot of people that have hated us in the past. I just want to say, like, not everybody's perfect because you know, and you know, in the past, you know, there was a certain time in ESW where a lot of people were hating on us, not because of our, well, maybe because of our content, but because of stuff that's happened outside of ESW. But look at it this way: we're playing video games to just to entertain people, and pretty soon, I mean, some people want to do this as a profession in real life like real life wrestling but i mean this is video games we're trying to entertain you guys with you know so, so much we can do in wwe games and you know you never know the stuff that people are going through in real life that you're actually you know you know uh being a keyboard keyboard whatever you call it keyboard, keyboard warrior yeah <laughs> Uh, got that mixed up. Keyboard I mean, I guess we can also thank the haters, too. I mean, in yeah. a sense, they kind of pushed us to be better. Yeah. I mean, there's a certain thing when it comes to, like, getting people to, you know, get better. Like, um, there's a thing called criticism, and there's then there's a thing that's called just being a straight-up, you know, jerk or whatever. Just, like, bashing, completely bashing us. When you're giving somebody criticism, doesn't mean to, you know, just, like, give them advice the wrong way. Like, come on, be a human being and be, like, helpful the right way. Don't try to rub somebody off the wrong way. Like, there's, there's a way of being nice to be... I can criticism. understand there are people out there that will take it, like, you know, completely the wrong way. Um, I mean, Jesse had a bad problem with, like, commenting on things like that, and he would get us into a lot of trouble at that time, so. Yeah, I mean, like, <laughs> like, there's, like, you don't know what that person is going through, so, I mean, what, what, just, I mean, like, if this happens anywhere in the world, like, if somebody's like rubbing you off the wrong way you never know what they're going through so just leave it be like we're trying to leave it be with whoever's trying to bash us or whatever but still if you watch esw you think something's not right well comment the nice way stop don't be like you know you know what i'm saying Kevin, like you get you could say like you guys could have done this a little bit better or something something that would help us i mean yeah, don't say, oh, this pay-per-view was garbage. Pfft, I, oh, I hated this. This is garbage. Well, this was garbage. The, the quality is terrible and all that shit. Yeah, I mean, you, you think we understand. You, you, you expect us to react the nice way. Oh, okay, okay. No, no. Just don't don't be dumb when it comes to, like, you know, criticism. Just act the, the right way. Because, I mean, if you're... When it comes to, like, real life, if you, like done this to somebody in real life and like you know out in the public you're not gonna get a very good reputation if you're just you know rubbing people off the wrong way yeah and i mean if this was a job you wouldn't really when you when if you're new to, to the working community you're not going to tell that person oh you suck because you know that's not a nice thing to do and that's obviously, obviously you're going to get fired for it <laughs> That's like, come on, why you? Why do you disrespect people? Like, life's too short not to be, you know, not to, life's too short to add more stress to whatever situation it is. The point is to have fun, entertain, and, you know, be happy. That's it. I mean, why would you want to add more problems to what people are already going through at the time? I mean, obviously... When it comes to ESW episodes and pay-per-views, it's not an easy thing to do. And whatever call owners out there that record or edit by themselves, they obviously know what I'm talking about. Yeah, I mean, like you said, it's not easy. And a lot of those people who hate on us, I'm not mentioning names, and there's a lot of people who understand what you go through. 
there's a lot of people who don't understand and they just need to like step back and look look for a little while and you know i mean get to understand the things that it takes to pr process a video i mean I, I honestly could care less what people think of me i mean i'm a heel in esw <laughs> what do i gotta think here i mean people are supposed to hate me i mean yeah i mean although i'm a face i kind of think the same way but at the same time i make sure i'm doing what i'm doing right so, you know, whether it's a mistake that I do, it's okay because everybody makes mistakes. Nobody's perfect. Yep. I mean, my first pro, my first voice promo in ESW, I didn't think I did well, but I mean, <laughs> <clears throat> and that's my goal too. I mean, like with promos, I'm, I'm trying to get really, really good because, you know, by the time Slamathon comes, which is our WrestleMania themed pay per view, I I want to be like you know, the very very best in the call community, like the best promo deliver, like just. Anyways, that that's a goal. Yeah, I mean that's gonna be hard to do. Yeah, it's gonna take a lot of work, but I'm willing to go through all of that to get to the top. <laughs> Slamathon. It seems so far away right now. Yeah. Um. I mean, with two K sixteen coming out next month. I mean. Yeah. If anything, we do Slamathon on that game, but I don't know what we're gonna do yet. It depends on if it has a feature, like a story feature, then. Yeah. But after Slamathon, we'll definitely be on PS4. We'll definitely be on 2K16. That's a guarantee. Yeah. And I mean, like like I said before, like with the recording and editing and all that stuff, especially if you're doing it by yourself, it's not a easy thing to do. I mean, if these podcasts work really well, we'd we'd be doing these podcasts every week so aside from being on ps4 we'd be doing these too so it would take a little while yeah yeah uh, so any other topics you want to touch up on a little bit <laughs> um well i mean what what's you want to talk about anything that's going on with WWE right now? It's up to you, man. I mean, I mean you're the host. <laughs> I'm I mean, just here. I mean, Night of Champions is coming up, and we got <laughs> Seth Rollins. <laughs> you oh, said yeah, that Seth? like you're all excited. You're like, <laughs> Night of Champions is coming <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Night of Champions is usually not something you get excited about anyway, but... In these terms, I guess, I mean, but yeah, Seth, actually, Seth Rollins is going to be defending both of his titles, individual matches, the United States Championship against John Cena, and the WWE World Heavyweight Championship against Sting. How do you think that's going to turn out? <laughs> I don't know. Obviously, Super Cena might win, and then, yeah. you know, Sting will probably lose this match again, like he got buried by Triple H. Imagine but. if Sting <laughs> actually won, though. <laughs> wow. He'd be like, he'd be like Undertaker as a WWE World Champion. He'd show up like once, once a year. <laughs> it'll be over. <laughs> That'd be worse than what Brock. Or, or it'll be like, title. or it'll be like The Rock. I mean, he was champion for what? I don't know. <laughs> a, a month or so. I don't even know the details, but. <laughs> I forgot. The times he did appear, he was just like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, like, with part-time champions, that's bad. But, I mean, pe some people just, like, complain about Seth Rollins. But that's because he's a heel. You're supposed to hate him. But you can't you can't not say that he's a... Like, you, you can't say he's a bad wrestler because he's actually doing a lot and putting his all into... You know, being I mean, like, if he makes John Cena look good, that says something. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I mean, John Cena looks good, but he's not. He doesn't look that good if he's against somebody like 
Big Show or whatever. I mean, CM Punk did a good job of making Cena look good too. Yeah, I mean, John Cena wasn't looking good with that broken nose. <laughs> I mean, like looking like Picasso over there. <laughs> I mean, but I'd say Seth Rollins is a pretty good wrestler. I mean, he's a heel. You're supposed to hate him, but, you know, you can't deny his ring skill. Most of his matches were won with help, but, I mean. Yeah. He beat Brock Lesnar, for goodness sake. Just kidding. But you know how that went out. <laughs> we, didn't even have, we didn't even have an end to that match. <laughs> like, <laughs> it's like Undertaker... Uh, assaults Brock and then Seth Rollins disappears, and then Brock and Taker have a controversial, or maybe Seth Rollins. Match. Maybe Seth Rollins was uh, <laughs> maybe Undertaker was Seth Rollins in a you know Seth Rollins costume or something. You know. <laughs> <laughs> they could have done better in the Brock and Taker match though. They could have ended it way better. Yeah. Than what happened? Like that's I'm, that was stupid. <laughs> I mean, one of my favorite parts of that match is like when uh, Brock Lesnar rose up like The Undertaker. He was laughing, and then The Undertaker rises up to, ha, ah, you think something's funny, right? <laughs> that that made my night, man. I couldn't stop laughing oh, after man. that. Everybody in the room watching the pay-per-view was like just dying laughing. I was like, wow. <laughs> but yeah, that that was probably one of my favorite parts of the match. Right there. That was that was good. What about Kevin Owens wanting Ryback now? Oh my gosh. <laughs> Feed me more. <laughs> <laughs> Kevin Owens needs to do better, honestly. I mean if they're gonna have a match at Night of Champions, I honestly don't know who'd win. I don't know if they are gonna put the title on Owens or if they just wanna keep you know just keep on with putting him in random matches against random superstars yeah (laughs) (laughs) i mean he needs a title pretty soon i mean the kevin owens versus bray wyatt would be an interesting match oh yeah that that'd be pretty cool but who'd be the face though (laughs) kevin Kevin owens Owens, probably i don't see bray wyatt being a face the way he's going right now (laughs) (laughs) he'd go back to being husky harris (laughs) Oh, man. And speaking of Bray Wyatt, Braun Strowman. Man, I didn't expect some... I didn't expect them to bring a new Wyatt family member. I mean, I thought they were going to bring a WWE superstar into the family, but obviously not. They That, that guy was actually in NXT, right? I think so. I don't even know. I don't watch that, watch that show. I mean, I never <laughs> seen much. him in- <laughs> I never seen him in NXT, but some people were saying how he used to be in NXT. So I guess oh, I mean that's that's something. I didn't watch Raw on Monday, so who did the Shield pick as their third member? Oh, it was Randy, Randy Orton. Orton. I know, yeah. I knew it. The Wyatt family just randomly started picking on him. So yeah, Randy Orton. <laughs> let's get Randy Orton. <laughs> we couldn't get anybody else better, so we're just gonna give Randy Orton throw him in there. I mean, he's practically a jobber right now, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, they probably put him in that match because they have nothing to do with Randy Orton, which is a shocker. They have nothing for Randy Orton at this moment. His <laughs> Sheamus rivalry is practically over. Yeah, I mean, if they were gonna fight at Nine of Champions, I, I was, I was just gonna be done because yeah. he wants to see that again. Sheamus will probably cash in at Night of Champions. Probably, probably not. I don't know. We, we'll never know. I can see it, but I don't see Sheamus the way he's going right now to be champion material. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean. Like. <laughs> They have to do more with Sheamus in order for him to actually, you know, in order for people to be like, oh, no, what if Sheamus cashes in? Like, we're, we're not even at that state right now. They, it's not like they're not hyping it up enough. Are we even going to see Brock Lesnar again? Like, honestly. Uh, <laughs> probably not until, well, we, we might see him at one pay-per-view this year and then. After that, we'll see him next year because you know how he is. He likes to be here at WrestleMania and SummerSlam season. <laughs> of course, Undertaker, we're probably not going to see till WrestleMania. Yep, that's another thing right there. 
Undertaker. Which is stupid, because, I mean, they're going to do that again. And then, oh my gosh, people want to see Sting and Undertaker already. Like, just give them that match and just... (laughs) I mean, like, why do something, like, why repeat something over and over? I mean, if it's something worth watching again, then yeah, but people get tired of this, like... Because apparently Undertaker collapsed again after he fought Brock Lesnar. So, yeah. I mean, a third time would, would not be good for him health-wise. Yeah. Like, you see this dude struggling to put in wrestling matches, and you're just going to keep, you know, fighting Brock? Come on now. Why don't you fight Brock yourself, and then you'd feel the pain? <laughs> <laughs> this guy is the real deal. WrestleMania. Like, Guys, Vince McMahon versus Brock Lesnar. <laughs> <laughs> Greatest Rest match in ever. <laughs> Rest in peace. <laughs> My God, Vince is dead, Michael. <laughs> <laughs> oh gosh, I don't even want to mention Vince being like I. You know, actually, there's actually some people on Twitter taking WWE so, like too far, and actually yeah. saying, "I wish Vince was dead." Wow. Well, I mean... (laughs) That's too much, man. Vince doesn't have everything to say when it comes to storylines. Yeah, like... It's like the board, board too, that has stuff to say about it, and, like... like It's the writers and the script and everything. I read a comment on Twitter saying, wow, I wish Vince... Like, somebody had a picture on Twitter where, um... They they looked up something about average age length or something like that, and uh, average human beings like you know, death like the age range and like it was like Vince's age, was, and then there was like a smiley face after it, mean basically meaning oh Vince is gonna die soon. I was like <laughs> wow really that's cold. <laughs> See when Vince does die, that's gonna be crazy. Like yeah, he's the guy that. Pfft, I mean, he's the guy that made this thing possible. Like, I don't see them keeping Triple H in charge for that much longer. Yeah, I mean, somebody would probably have to kick in. Maybe Shane. Maybe we get to see Shane again. <laughs> that, would, that would be kind of cool. I mean, Shane O'Mac. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Take over his dad's portion of the. I mean, if he did come back, I I wouldn't I wouldn't be very surprised i mean i i probably would see that happen it would probably be somebody from the mcmahon family yeah i mean but triple h is when it comes to like uh entertaining the fans and stuff like that triple h is good around that category because look what he's doing with nxt he nxt is really really good to watch some people don't watch it i don't watch it that much but I mean, it's it's really good wrestling there. Yeah, I, I think, mean, <laughs> I think in NXT you get to do whatever you want, but when it comes to WWE, it's like you know they mess you up. Yeah, in a sense, I guess. I mean, a lot of things did change when Triple H became CEO, COO, yeah. or whatever it's called. I don't even care. <laughs> <laughs> but a lot of things did change and. I mean, what like everything needs change once in a while. It can't be the same all the time. So change is good. Seth Rollins needs a change. <laughs> yeah, Seth Rollins is a big change. <laughs> he needs to do turn face soon. Shield. <laughs> Everybody wants him to go to Shield, but I I don't really want him to go to the Shield, honestly. Like. Uh, I wanted to see him more on his on a single kind of like not cheating or his anything. singles competition, right? Like I want to see him more in like fair. like his wrestling background, right? I don't want to see like <laughs> him getting help or you know kicked, being kicked being back in the rest. shield. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I think he. I kind of see him being faced soon because look what's happening with the authority. They're kind of like slowly turning their backs on him. So, Seth versus There's Triple also H. the question of Kane, too. Yeah. Wonder Will when. Kane come back? <laughs> I mean, I'm waiting for Kane to come back. I wonder, like, 
wasn't he supposed to come back for SummerSlam or something? I'm not sure, but I'm pretty sure he's coming back soon. After being conquered by Brock. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my ankle. <laughs> See, when Kane comes back, he needs to become the monster again. He's like... <laughs> yeah, like he's like a big little he's like a big baby practically when he's <laughs> with the, the authority I mean how do you go from being a a demon to a, a dude in a suit <laughs> <laughs> a not so scary demon in a suit a guy that just gives you matches like you know what I'm not gonna st- I'm not gonna give you a choke. He kind of talk me. like this when he speaks, you know. <laughs> I'm not gonna break your your shoulders. I'm not gonna injure you like I did to Daniel Bryan. I'm gonna give you a match tonight. That's what I'm gonna do. <laughs> like, ooh, I'm scared. Ooh, so scary. <laughs> you don't scare me anymore, Mr. Kane. <laughs> <laughs> and you know what? I got even better news. It's gonna be against me. Oh, I get to job you out, okay. <laughs> okay, I get to face the fat Kane. Five minutes later, <laughs> one, two, three, Kane loses. By God, Michael! <laughs> they still call him the devil's favorite demon, and he's not even in his, like, gear. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my so gosh. what about the Dudley boys, eh? <laughs> oh, yeah. They've actually turned up the tag team. I guess it's going to be like the whole uh, New Age Outlaw scenario. They're going to be here. They're going to win the tag team goal, and then when they lose it, they're going to leave. Yeah, probably. <laughs> <laughs> I see that happening. Probably. <laughs> I mean, but when they came back, it was just like... Like, them feuding with the New Day, and the New Day save the tables. That's 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 funny. I find that funny. <laughs> Kofi needs to go back to being a singles competitor. Yeah, Xavier Woods uh, tagging with Big E instead. Yeah. Right. Instead <laughs> Xavier they got Woods, him. why instead not our truth tag with uh, Big E and uh, Xavier Woods? <laughs> <laughs> and then just leave <laughs> Kofi, just leave Kofi alone. So you got Biggie dancing, you'd have R Truth rapping, and you have Xavier Woods playing that uh whatever he was playing, playing instruments <laughs> outside the ring. <laughs> Biggie looks so weird on two K fifteen with his afro. Oh gosh. <laughs> He's got that eat the feet finisher. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, I just wonder like one one day what if one of the new day members just win the Royal Rumble? <laughs> <laughs> Became world champion. Oh gosh! Clap for your one-time WWE champ. It's a new day. Yes, it is. <laughs> new day. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be funny. Well, like that what happened to the world. Rusev and Ziggler rivalry? Uh, I mean, now it's just Lana and Summer Rae, practically. I mean, not Lana anymore, because they said uh, Lana got injured training somewhere. She yeah. uh, she hurt her wrist or something like that, so Lana's not going to be here for a couple months. No, but she's here. She was, wasn't she here like when she slapped Ziggler or something? Yeah, but after that, I think, is when she got injured or something like that. Like... Yeah. I don't know. It's. I think it's just gonna be Dolph Ziggler and Rusev and Summer Rae now. And then Rusev's gonna be winning, beating Ziggler until Lana comes back. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I feel bad for Ziggler now. Why? Because they're trying to frame him and stuff. <laughs> yeah. I mean, Lana's not there to get all mad and all that stuff, so I mean, that's not... Wait, didn't they that. try to do the same thing with John Cena? <laughs> like, another not another group of people, though. It wasn't, like, Bruce Seven. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yep. I mean, but if it involves John Cena, John Cena's always gonna win that. <laughs> Obviously, I mean He's John Cena John would be <laughs> John Cena would be Chuck Norris hands down. <laughs> K 
taking a roundhouse kick and kicking out of two and a half. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. I mean, so, uh... <laughs> like, another thing we wanted to mention is, uh... Well, I've got a plan for ESW in the future. Um, now that we've talked about uh, WWE and, you know, the Dudley's coming back and all that good stuff. Uh, what does ESW have? Like, I, I know I have, like, plans in the future. I mean, I got nearly two years left of uh, high school. So I'm a junior now. And I actually have plans for, like, I'm not, we're, ESW ain't going to last forever. We know that for sure because, you know, my, I'm not planning to be a professional YouTuber. Like, I'm, I'm that's not, I, I don't want to be a professional YouTuber <coughs> when I get older. Like, God, that's not my goal. That I'm doing this, you know, as a start to, like, you know, entertaining the fans and stuff like that. Learning how to edit, like, you know, um... I'm actually trying to be an athlete in the near future, so, you know, wrestling. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, yeah, I mean, ESW ain't going to last forever. You could probably see ESW going on for another two to three years because, you know, I, I'm, of course, afterwards, you, you know, if you wanted to follow up on us, you could, like, follow us on Twitter and all that and, you know, follow our journey towards that. But yeah, yeah, like Icon, you, you, you've heard my idea on what we were gonna do after you know ESW. So a little like, bit, yeah, <laughs> yeah, like starting our own real life thing. Of course, not a real organization, but you know something on the side to start off with, like how KBW did with their uh, backyard thing. So. I mean, but are you do would you want to go in that direction? So, like, you know, would you want to try to be a professional wrestler? Well, I've been thinking about it for a long time, but it's just you know the actual work of getting to <laughs> getting yeah. to that portion like that. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's I, really hard, and you know, I mean, it's like stepping into that dimension is like you know you gotta. Uh, you're going to be losing sleep, you're going to be tired all the time, but on the other hand, it's going to be a fun experience and traveling the world and doing all that stuff, so, you know, if it was easy, er everyone would be doing it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, <laughs> there's a lot of people who are doing it now, though. Yeah, I mean, there's there's a lot of risk to take when you're you know, going into that direction because look at Tyson Kidd now. I think he's they they've told him that he's not gonna be able to wrestle again. Look at Daniel Bryan; he may never wrestle again. I think that's already official. Maybe I don't know. I don't pay it too much attention to him. But you never know. It's Daniel Bryan. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he may end up being like Shawn Michaels. Uh, he had that back injury for a long time, and then. Ended up coming back, so. And then he could come back in his entrance. Yes, yes, and all, and out of nowhere he just like <laughs> pulls something while doing the yes thing, the yes taunt. <laughs> he does like the Ric Flair pop on the on the on the ramp. <laughs> he falls. <laughs> oh, I need a medic. And then they just change his entrance. Go down, go down. <laughs> oh man, but it's. It's going to be a very difficult journey if you're someone that's willing to go through that. But that's wrestling for you. I mean, some people that haven't, like, actually stepped into the ring think that it's just, like, something that you get, can't get hurt from. Like, some people just say, why do you watch that stuff? It's like... It's, it's like, so fake. Yeah, man. it's so fake. Like, okay, let, let me... Let's... Like, anyone... That says that obviously hasn't been in a cell match. Like, hasn't jumped from... How many feet is that? I don't even know. I don't even know. You haven't even landed <laughs> from 
all the way you haven't even jumped all the way down into an announce table and like you know hurt one of your body parts like your shoulder or something like that like make foley versus undertaker i mean getting hit with a chair isn't the best feeling either yeah i mean they like people is like people are always saying oh wrestling is fake because they they just see the regular shows they don't bother watching the pay-per-views like like extreme rules or money in the bank like where actual like actual blood comes in or brock lesnar matches every brock lesnar match practically he bleeds yeah like they they just watch the regular shows where it's just you know the the weak punching and of course that's not gonna hurt anybody like you just fake punching somebody but i mean the chops are real yeah those kind of hurt i mean if you get one from big show <laughs> mm. or rick flair i mean <laughs> yeah but it's like all about the experience before you can even say something about it like this that's one thing you can't just talk about something you can't just like that, that kind of goes into like ESW's thing like you can't just bash something when that you, you know nothing about practically yeah, you, you don't know what's <laughs> behind those doors you have never experienced it but yet you just you know talk about it the wrong way Instead of, you know, giving them recognition for what they're doing for everybody. Yep. <laughs> I mean, yeah. and going back to the whole wrestling thing, um, the ring isn't the softest thing to land on either. Like, yeah, you're, you s- you're really screwing up your back every time. If you land one, one move, you can screw up your back for life, man. And I mean... Yeah, it's like, not that have, easy. I don't think these people have ever seen when a ring was actually built. Like, if you if you watch how a ring is actually built, like some people are like, "Oh, come on, man, that thing is like a mattress." Are you serious right now? Are you actually <laughs> saying that a mattress? It's actually like a thin layer of padding, like you know what they do on gymnastic floors. Yeah, that's practically it. Underneath that's like. Pl- I would and metal and everything yeah. and so it's like you're landing on a hard hard like wood and metal and everything and uh, yeah there is springs like, that will help with your fall a little bit yeah. but you're still landing on something hard I mean like you, you you can't say oh how do you know that because I well me I've actually went to WWE events we've actually went there early enough where we got to watch them build the ring if you've seen any ring that's being built you 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 see that the materials they use is like no joke it's not is nothing compared to a mattress i tell you that right now i mean if you wrestle at your house with somebody on a mattress and you say that's what they use well obviously you're not paying close enough attention to how a ring is being built Cause I've actually seen how, like, I've actually seen when a ring was built and when it was taken apart, you could actually see what they use. Do you know that moment when you're falling and you have that weird feeling? Just imagine how much the wrestlers would feel when they're jumping off the top rope and landing on nothing but hard floor. Yeah, like, like <laughs> especially when you're doing flips in the air, if you land the wrong way, oh my gosh. I mean, the thing that Adrian Neville does, if he lands the wrong way, he could really hurt himself. Yeah, like, I know every single time he does that move, he's like, oh, gosh, I hope this ends well. Like, that's not a move to joke about. Like, that's not even a, a easy move to do. Because... Yeah, I mean, the DDT is even an iffy move for a lot of reasons. Yeah. Why do you think they banned the pile driver? Like, I mean, that broke a lot of necks, apparently, so. Yeah, I mean, before Kevin Owens even went to WWE, I think they've banned a lot of his moves because, you know, it could actually really hurt A package pile driver. (laughs) (laughs) Like, these moves are no joke. But, Mm. I mean... I can imagine. I can imagine even an RKO hurting. I mean, like imagine 
if your mouth was on that on Randy's arm when he nails you with the RKO, that would hurt. I mean, it would hurt him too, but like <laughs> you could accidentally bite somebody if your mouth isn't closed when they're doing a move. You can like sink your teeth into one guy's shoulder or something like that. RKO. Oh. <laughs> You'll probably knock a few teeth out if you're not careful. Yeah, it, like when every day, like when I hear people saying wrestling is, you know, it's just a joke. Like, no, it's not a joke. It's just like they have to go through just as much as whatever any other athlete has to go through. Like, where whether it's basketball or baseball. I mean, it's yeah. It's not UFC where you can just knock out a guy in 10 seconds. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> UFC, it's... I mean, I wouldn't consider UFC that entertaining. It's entertaining, of course, for some people, but... All it is is just training to fight. And there's nothing involved with that whole <laughs> that whole concept. There's just... Yeah. There's not really much promo, promos going on. Yeah, there's and not there's just really any much story Entertainment. <laughs> yeah. It's just like you hit a guy and then you back up and you wait like five minutes to hit him again sort of thing. It's like the fights are always like prolonged. They're always really long kind of fights, right? And the ones that aren't really long end in like, what, five minutes? <laughs> it's like, Ronda okay. Rousey fights. <laughs> <laughs> Knockout! Oh, she's gotta be dead. <laughs> Ronda Rousey versus Brock Lesnar, by God. <laughs> <laughs> Brock Lesnar's like, oh, Paul, I think we got another streak to conquer. We're on our way. <laughs> Brock Lesnar gets in. I'm done. I'm out of here. <laughs> gets hit once. <laughs> and tells Joe Rogan he's got like all these injuries I'm done guys <laughs> see you next year <laughs> I'm gonna go back to WWE and work part time yeah let me just get the title and uh you know disappear every Sunday or every Monday Let I'm gonna let Paul talk for me I'm gonna try to look as pretty as I can and then yeah yep <laughs> <laughs> I mean no offense to Paul Heyman he's a great guy he's really yeah. amazing but I'm mean, hating <laughs> He deserves a golden mic. <laughs> when Paul talks, everybody needs to shut up. But <laughs> I mean, <laughs> but Brock Lesnar—he's always been practically in Brock Lesnar's corner. So yeah. But I think there's times where Paul actually gets tired of Brock. Like, <laughs> <laughs> wonder if there's ever times that he gets tired. I mean. It ain't easy, uh, trying to put over somebody. Because for Paul Heyman, it is. He's done it for like so long now. Yeah, <laughs> that's true. But but, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if it was a guy like Curtis Axel, it'd be different. But this has been episode one of ESW The Doctor's Office with your host ALM. We will see you in the next one. Although. There might not be a next one if you don't like this video. So like this video right now and depending how many likes we get, depending how many people actually like this new series, we'll probably continue it. And who knows, we might even bring, I might even bring uh, your favorite ESW superstar on this podcast or maybe someone that you would like to you know come on this podcast and talk a few things here but we might be doing wwe predictions results reactions etc but yeah comment down in this video comment a question that you would like for me and my future guests to be answered if we do another one so don't forget to leave that question, don't forget to like the video, and if you're new here, don't forget to subscribe.